تو یہ قواعد الفقیہ ہی ہے بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه كنتنيج إن شاء الله القواعد الفقهية أن شرح شرح ذي منظومة القواعد الفقهية لمصنفها عبد الرحمن ابن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله تعالى We are at the verse 11 11 we're starting at the verse 11 and the verse 11 which is starting the book starting the qawad the qawad after the introduction uh, the qawad will start at number 11. the first one qala an niyyatu shartun lisa'ir al-amal biha as-salah wal-fasad lil-amal So what we're going to do, inshallah, I will read in the Arabic, I translate in English, and we do the sharh. Anniyatu shartun. Anniyatu means intention. Shartun, condition. Lisa'iri al-amal to all the action. Biha as-salahu. Biha, by the niya, by it. As-salahu. الصلاح is the acceptance والفساد is the فساد which is like spoiled or corrupted or non accepted للعمل so the subject here we have the action itself what makes the action to be accepted or rejected is the نية is the intention so النية شرط لسائر العمل Intention is a condition to all the action. By the intention, whether the, I mean, based on the intention, based on the intention, the action will be accepted or rejected. That's the verse. النيّة النيّة in the language in the Arabic language قال معناها العزم قال معناها العزم العزم is the will to do العزم is the will to do والنيّة also is meant with it meant with it or part of it is الإخلاص the sincerity sincerity but النية النية أعم من الإخلاص النية is more general than the إخلاص because النية can someone intend things you know شرك there's an intention for the shirk. Intend someone to make sujood or to sacrifice to other than Allah. As for the ikhlas, is the niyyatu khalisatan lillah. The intention to do that action only for Allah. So the niyyah is more generous. So the niyyah can include under its name other than the action done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's why some of the scholar, when it comes to the action, they say niya plus ikhlas. So actually they, they put uh, two action before starting the uh, two action of the heart, if you say, you know, uh, before starting the action itself. They say intention and then the ikhlas. Because someone, for example, standing to pray, he had the intention to pray. But then that intention might have, might have riya in it. He intended to pray dhuhr, but he's actually, he's the way he's standing, he wants to show that he's in khushu for other people. So his, his intention is for the prayer, but there is no ikhlas in it. There's, it's not for Allah, he's showing off. Or someone paying nafaqa, he intending to give the nafaqa, but that nafaqa, it has, subhanallah, not khalisa lillah. Not khalisa. Tayyip. Qal wal akhlasu akhassu min al niyyati li anna ma'naha akhlasu al niyyati min shawai bil shirki wal riya. So the akhlas is more narrow or specific or more um, determined or uh, have more specification, if you can say, for uh, than the intention. So the ikhlas will be the intention purified or cleansed from any shirk or any riya. The scholars, you know, they had put condition in Islam for that intention. The first condition is to have Islam first. Because someone cannot intend something as a worship when he's not Muslim. So the first condition is Islam. The second condition is a tamiz. What, what the meaning of a tamiz? A tamiz is to have uh, the ability to differentiate between the good and the bad. And in this case, in this case, it requires someone to be sane. So the insane, he's not, you know, uh, included here. And to be uh, of age of puberty. And when you say of age of puberty, then here we exclude the children who will not be able to make the tamis. Huh? The third condition in the niyyah is the knowledge. What it means, the knowledge? That the person knowing what he's doing, because he will not intend something that he does not know. Time. And a niyyah to sahiha, the sound niyyah, is the one that is uh, intended or done seeking, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the niyyah sahih. Then qal uh, 11 here, wa niyyatu shartun, a niyyatu shartun, condition. In the definition of the uh, scholar of usul, they said, "Ashartu ma yalzimu min adamihi al-adam, wa la yalzimu min wujudihi al-wujub." Or wujud al-hukm wa la adamihi lidat. The meaning of it. Shart. Ashartu. ما يلزم من عدمه العدم عدم الحكم. Take the الطهارة is a condition for the صلاة. Condition for the صلاة. If there is no طهارة, the صلاة could not exist. ما يجب من عدمه. So the absence, the non-existence of the purification. 
implies or leads or obligates the non-existence of the salah. Because someone only prays without wudu, he's like he didn't pray. وَلَا يَجِبُ مِنْ وُجُوبِهِ الْوُجُودِ وَلَا عَدَمِهِ لِذَاتِهِ And if someone has wudu, it does not mean that he's obligated to pray. And the existence of the wudu will not affect the salah as existence or non-existence. What does it mean? If someone wants to pray, he has to have wudu. But if he has wudu, for example, someone made wudu, he said, now, said, someone tell you, I, I just made wudu. He said, now you, you must pray. Say, why? It's not time of prayer. So that's the right answer. So the existence of the wudu does not obli obligate you to make wudu. Okay? And then on the non-existence of wudu also does not mean that the salat does not exist. I mean, which is like, uh, it's not obligatory on you. This is the meaning of the condition. So the condition kind that what is needed, what is like a key to the action that you're intending to do. That's the condition. So the niya here is a condition for every action. The action will not exist if you don't have the knee. But if you have intention to do, you're not obligated to do it right now. He said, Alhamdulillah, I made intention to do Umrah. He said, you did? Yes, he said, you have to go now. I said, but that's not the definition of condition. The Umrah is there. Whenever you get there, you're going to do your Umrah. But this Umrah will not be accepted if you don't have the intention. So the intention is a condition. That's the meaning of the Hadith of the Prophet. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ قَالَ Then, النِّيَّةُ شَرْطٌ لِسَائِرِ الْعَمَلِ Here, uh, The niya also as a condition, there's two types. There's niya to shart lissaha wa shartun lil wuju. Shartun lissaha wa shartun lil wuju. I'll give you an example. At tahara to شرط صحة الصلاة الطهارة example شرط لصحة الصلاة so without the tahara the salah is not accepted there's شرط الوجوب for example to be able to travel to hajj it is a condition making the hajj obligatory on you for example someone He's sick, he said, I cannot, I don't have the sita, I don't have the ability. So if he does not go, he's not blamed. But if the sick person asks people to carry him and to take him to hajj, does the performance of his hajj will be accepted? Uh, yes, it is. If he didn't go, if he didn't go, he will not be blamed. But if he goes, he will be his action will be rewarded. This is, we call it, shartu sah, shartu wujub. Shartu wujub only. I have the condition, make it wajib. But it will not prevent me from not doing it. The other one, shartu saha, which is mean, if, if it's not performed, then the action is not even accepted. So these are the types of the shurut. 
here the author in the sharh there is some of the action does not require intention so when he said uh, the author in the poem said qala we want to get it, you know, with some khusus, takhsis. So this is amma, but there is exception where the action, you know, not all action required. Paying your debt, if you pay it without niya, you already paid it. Someone cannot come tell you, you know, I need uh, my money. I said, I paid you. He said, I know that you didn't have your niya when you paid it. <laughs> so the payment itself, you know, fulfilled the action without a knee. He given uh, other example called um, removing the impurity. Is an action required to have the place or your clothes pure so you can perform the salah. But removing the najasa, it does not require ni. Does not require ni. So this is to specify that there's some exception where the niya is not is not required. But here, according to the author, qala wa niyatu shartun li sa'ir al-amal. So he said, a niyatu is a condition to most of the action, instead of say all of the action, say most of the action or the majority of the action. Now. <laughs> Paying off the debt itself fulfill, you know, one's action, right? So, nahna uh, ibadah. If it's because fulfilling your, you know, honoring your commitment and your engagement that is required by the Sharia. There's action when someone would do it. Uh, it depends on his intention, actually. And this is what we, the other point. Some, for example, when someone pay his debt, that thing that he's obligated to do. So that obligation to do it's not like rewarded in any way. It's not like you are fasting or praying. But when someone will fail to pay and actually refuse to pay, that it becomes a major sin. It's a major sin. So action done, not requiring intention, you know, are not really rewarded. Are not rewarded. Unless someone there's intention around that payment who make it to be rewarded. But someone give you money and by obligation you have to honor the payment. It becomes major sin when someone will will intentionally refuse to pay. There's a punishment. Brother. Um, some of the scholars, they give, you know, more uh, specific condition or like rule to help us put this uh, qaida, because we are talking about the qaad, qawaid, basis or rules. Qalu la thawaba illa bini. Which is, comes back to uh, answering the question here. There's no reward except with intention. Which is mean if someone paying his debt, he does not need an intention. Help us to also limit the intention to the action that has reward. And these things, if you do them with the intention, you will be rewarded, even they are lawful. That's why adding an intention to an action which is not worship becomes rewarded. 
then the intention instead you know saying like uh, the intention is condition it is condition for we say most of the action not all of the action but the intention it also you know the source or condition to like uh, if someone seeking the reward he has to have the intention so there is no reward without intention an action who does not require intention, if you put in it intention, valid intention, then it will be rewarded. Take any action in your mind that is not a worship and do it for the sake of Allah. Someone, he, he taken a walk. He say, I'm taking a walk, for example, to help me get fresh air so I can recite the Quran better. So the intention of the walk is for what? For improving Quran recitation. It becomes a better or not. But someone, subhanAllah, taking a walk just to, to walk is lawful. There's no, there's no reward on it. But the work it became rewarded because of the intention that someone had did it. That's why, subhanAllah, the believer can make out of his life all rewarded by his own intention. Actually, the intention make the believer to die as a shaheed. But the Prophet sallallahu said, the majority of the shuhada of my ummah, they die in their beds. He died in his bed, he's in shaheed. Why? Because he intended sincerely the shahada for the sake. So he lived for the sake of Allah. And he dies a shaheed even in his bed. Someone, uh, for example, um, he's going to uh, every day to the fitness. His intention, his intention is to have better way of thinking, stronger body, so to use it for the sake of Allah, to use it in writing, to use it, for example, to teach uh, children, so he needs to be in good condition, and these children he's doing for the sake of da'wah, etc., so his daily visit of the fitness with this intention is even. The other person, his daily fitness is to tighten his body so he look muscular to show off when he go out, especially at the summertime. So this person, his intention is showing off. What do you think the intention leading him? It's the same thing. There's an action who leads to paradise. The same action leads to hellfire. You see someone in sujood. They take you a picture of someone in sujood. Said, Masha Allah. Said, hold on, don't say Masha Allah. Till you magnify, you know, you go like uh, uh, zoom in or zoom out. To see the whole picture. When you zoom out, you see the person making sujood in front of mihrab. He said, oh, MashaAllah, he's praying to Allah. If you zoom out and you see the person making sujood to a cow or to an idol, what are you going to say? Say, A'udhu Billah. The same action, one intention was for Allah leading him to Iliyin, and the other intention was for other than Allah. <laughs> So now we have three types of intention. The intention for most of the action when is a worship. Then there's action, I do not require intention, therefore most of the action require the intention, but some action does not require intention. The third is lawful action if you add to it an intention 
associated with your worship, with your purpose of life, then it will be rewarded. And in these two last one, we add the uh, the ruling or the qaida la thawaba illa bini la thawaba illa bini la thawaba illa bini no reward only by intention no reward only by intention and this is actually this qaida is profound why? Because when someone pray, when someone pray, and he didn't intend the prayer, say, should you repeat the prayer, or your prayer is valid as action, but not rewarded because you didn't have the intention. So it's like more subtle when you come to this, you know, more details, which is actually the Hanafi school. Say, if you do wudu and you didn't make intention, your wudu is sahih because you did the action. You make the sniffling, you make the gargling, you wash your hand, you wash. But then you didn't do the intention. That wudu gave you the key to pray because he did the action right, but that wudu is not rewarded because you didn't have the intention. That intention that you doing it for the sake of Allah, you doing it taqarruban ila Allah subhanahu wa taala, and this is the, the difference. So that's the uh, the qaida la thawaba illa biniya. You know, help to understand the uh, the the thought of the school of thought or the way how uh, the analysis is done uh, within the Hanafi school of thought. Some of the other scholar, they use another uh, word, which is maqasid, intent. وَيَقُولُونَ الْأُمُورُ بِمَقَاسِدِهَا Matters, you know, depends on their maqsid, maqsid, what you intended for. Al-maqsadu is bigger and wider in definition than the intention, the niyyah. The niyyah is specified, I intend to do. Al-maqsad is like I'm heading toward it. That's maqsad. Maqsad, he said, uh, my intent, uh, my objective is to pray to Allah. My niya, I intend now to pray to Allah. So the maqsid is more general. So I said, al-umuru bi maqasidiha, matters are, you know, depends on their maqsid, on their intent, on their objectives. And this is more shamila, more shamila. And why we say matters and umur? Because it includes the action of the body, the action of the heart, and the statement, the saying that you say. See if there's uh, things that we need to add here in this uh, sharah of this verse. And here in the sharah saying, uh, you know, the best word to fit the uh, the um, the issue or the qaida of the niyyah is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Innama al-a'malu bin-niyyat. Innama al-a'malu bin-niyyat. So the a'mal here depends on their intention. Or deeds are governed by their intention. 
deeds are governed by their intention. And the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is the one who gives us the whole context of the meaning of the of the intention and their relation with the uh, with the action. Is not higher in hukum. Is uh, is wider in in uh, in definition. The intention is more specific. The maqsad is is uh, in volume bigger and in in definition, you know, bigger in definition. So it has more meaning, more meaning, not more like you know details. For example, the intention is more specific to one particular action and a very details. The maqsad. Uh, is kind of an objective, a kind of intent. So it's bigger, bigger in understanding, bigger and not specify. Is it general? Uh, 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 more absolute and mutlaqa, open. The other one is specified. So the maqsad, you know, it might require me to determine exactly one path. Because the maqsad said, oh, untend the pleasure of Allah. I said, but you have to pray. You know, sometimes you say, my maqsad, my intent is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, please Allah, you have to do details in every action. So you have to make intention into your salah, intention into your zakah, intention into your siyam, etc. So the maqsad come to englobe all the action because they have one obje objective. But for example, if someone is praying Isha, he needs to specify and know in his heart that he's praying Isha, not Dhuhr. Because if someone enter and prayed, uh, you know, uh, they are in a cave and he joined people praying in the dark, with the intention he has like a jet lag, with the intention that he praying Dhuhr and they pray the Isha, they're not gonna tell him, no, that's fine, you prayed with us, Isha. He has to pray Isha. Because the intention he joined them, example, or Dhuhr and Asr are closed. He prayed with them Asr and they told him, no, fine. He said, he said I, I thought it's Dhuhr. What are you gonna say? He said, you have to pray Asr. He said, uh, actually, I didn't know that you've been praying Asr. He said, if you didn't make the intention, so you have to pray again the Asr. So even in the Salah, you have to specify the intention. But the whole maqsad of the Salah is to pray to Allah. So you see, the maqsad is like more general that can englobe the whole worship. Come to the Salah, the whole Salah. The intention comes to tell you, what are you praying? You say, praying salat. Which salat? Say dhuhr. Say then intended to be dhuhr. And actually the intention differentiates between salat. If you come to the masjid at the time of the asr and the, the jama'ah did, and you didn't pray dhuhr, you join them, then praying the imam leading the asr and you, your intention is dhuhr. But the whole jama'ah, their maqsid is praying to Allah. That's the difference. Any other question? Qala huna, wa niyyatu shartun li sa'ir al-amal, biha as-salah wa al-fasad lil-amal. So here he specified by the niyyah is either you're going to have acceptance of the action or al fasad. So he, uh, Rahimahullah, uh, specified the objective and the role of the intention. Yaqul Mutarrif ibn Abdullah, Salahu al Qalbi bi Salah al Amal, wa Salahu al Amali bi Salah al Niyyah. The soundness of the heart depends on the soundness of the action. And the soundness of the action depends on the soundness of the intention, which is the purity of the intention. How sincere is the intention? (laughs) 
Qala, and the meaning of that, that it is a condition to have a sincere intention for the action, then to have its impact on the heart. Because an action without intention, it does not have an effect on one's conduct, behavior, and heart. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Salatu عن الفحشاء والمكر كما قال فكأن لا صلاة له أن إن ذا حديث قال فليس له من القيام إلا السهر وليس له من الصوم إلا الجوع he only gaining from the standing praying the night only being you know tiredness and being sleepless and only gaining from the fasting you know starving why? Because his intention is not there. So the ibadah will not have its effect, benefit, if the intention is not there. People are traveling and going hijrah. A person making his hijrah to Allah is his messenger, and the other one making his hijrah to a business. And he's together with the Prophet. Someone all along and his life will be rewarded and the other one he does not have any reward because his intention going with them to Medina or to the next city because to do another business where he is is not working well. He accepted Islam but he's going for opportunity of life. The other one he's going to please Allah. And they might get both together, they open business, both they'll be successful the other one, all his, subhanAllah, life is rewarded because he did true hijrah. The other one, he's not gaining anything. قَالَ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَتُهُ and whom his hijrah is to Allah and his messenger. So his hijrah is to Allah and his messenger. And whoever his hijrah is to business, dunya, or to seeking a woman to, 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 to marry her, then his migration is to what he did, he migrated for. Even the Prophet Sassan didn't even want to mention it again. Yes, yeah. Well, the, there's a saying, I think it's extracted from a hadith of the Prophet or inspired from a hadith of the Prophet, that uh, the best worship of the transgressor is sleeping. The person unjust and transgressor, what is his best worship? Is to sleep. Because while he's sleeping, everybody else is safe. It's not When he's awake, he's, he's hurting people, harming people. So he said, <laughs> So to, to, if you want to give good advice to a tyrant, tell them, please sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> for sleeping, you know, uh, ibadah too, ibadah. Uh, there's companion, they take naps, short naps. As a ibadah, why? So they can be able to make Qiyamul Layl in a very good and fresh condition. So they use Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Alayhim to ask permission while they are in the market for some, you know, dekakin, uh, some stores, to go to their back in the back store to take, like, lay down a little bit. So when they've been asked, you know, kind of like, imagine you are in, in, in the mall, and then he asked, he said, you know, a friend of yours, he said, can I take, just lay down in the back of your store? He said, okay. So if you do it often, he said, what happened? I mean, and you go to that mall because you need, not like to, like people today, they go to mall like going out. People, because you, you want to get staff for your home. 
So being asked, they said, we do this, we do it. So we have a strength in the night to make Qiyamul Layl. So they become having that management of time for the purpose to have that devotion, to have that focus in what they intending to do. So that sleep, those naps, they are highly rewarded. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but I need a little clarification. So basically what you're saying is that you have to make intention for every action you tend to do. Or if you're doing a good intention, a good action, but you know your intention isn't there to start with, is that good uh, action void again? I'm not sure if I understand the answer. Okay. Let me rephrase that. Every action requires attention. Most of the action, we corrected it. Okay. That's why after the analysis, we said, Laysa li sa'ir al-amal, we said most of the action, because some of the action does not require intention. Then we come up with another rule. We said, let's push it this way. There's no reward without intention. So if instead our focus or emphasis on the action, let's have the focus or the emphasis on the reward. So said the reward only come with intention. Then we generalize all the action of worship, they only reward it if they have intention. That's one. Then, Every action who does not require intention, if you do it with the right intention, will be rewarded. Like the example that we're giving. Walking, sleeping, but for a purpose. For a purpose of worship, for a purpose of doing good. Someone, you know, he said, I'm going to take this trip for an action you know, to, to please Allah. Different action. From, since from, subhanAllah, the time you leave the home, the counter of Hasanat will be working. The one who making a trip just to disobey Allah, the counter of sins will start since he, from the time he leaves his house. His intention. So the other person, he made his trip and his walk and his steps, all of it hasana because of his intention. The same when someone, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu already been decreed some of the hasanat that are being granted because your action itself is intention. If you go to the masjid, you know, in every step, hasana and erase sayyah. Why? Because your action to go to the masjid itself is the intention to pray. So Allah will grant you that travel, all hasanat. If you apply, now the masjid, nobody, you know, except uh, in general, someone go to the masjid for what reason? To pray. Right? Then your action to go to the masjid itself is a worship becomes. Someone go to another place. That one going to ask about the intention. The masjid we know. That's only that masjid is built for dhikrullah. You go to another place. You say, why are we going? You say, wallah, I heard there is a miskin. And he needs help. I'm going to help him. He said, this intention, make all your travel hasanat. The travel itself becomes worship. If someone, he heard that there is a new place, serving a new type of intoxicant, and he's driving to it, this travel itself is all sin. What inshallah. Adab al-Qur'an, the reading of the brush of teeth. 
Yes. Yes. That's what I said. You can make your life out, all of it rewarded by your intention. And the Prophet Sallallahu taught us this. Even you look at yourself, your mirror, you be rewarded. Because you remember hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Alhamdulillah, that he beautified our faces. And beautified our faces. Everyone is beautiful because he looks like a human being. He's not an animal. Or he's not like, kind of looks like those shayateen or jinn. And he say, oh Allah, as you beautified it, our appearance, beautify our khuluq. So you looking at the mirror is rewarded. قالوا الحديث قالوا على السواك قالوا مطهرة للفم مرضاة للرب The brushing the teeth is cleaning the teeth the, the brushing cleaning the teeth and cleaning the mouth and leading or causing the pleasure of Allah Every action you can make out of it rewards, subhanAllah. Now, the, the important point here that uh, in the second look, what he said, قَالَ بِهَا الصَّلَاحُ وَالْفَسَادُ لِلْعَمَلِ So, what govern, uh, subhanAllah, the way of the acceptance and the rejection of the Intention is, uh, of the action is the intention. The, the scary hadith, the fuel, the three categories of people who are going to be uh, serving as the fuel of hellfire. You know the hadith, right? Someone who claimed to be shaheed and someone who claiming to be a great scholar and the other one, he's, he's teacher of Qur'an. Fasad, all their action was spoiled and, and rejected. Why? Because of their ill intention. Qala I mean, someone in, the, in one narration, someone he's rich and he gave his money, in the, you know, as a nafaqa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will give you this wealth. And the other one, I gave you this knowledge and I give you the tawfiq. What did you do with it? He said, yeah, Allah, I did for you. I, I spent money in your sake. The other one, I taught in your sake. He said, no, you didn't do it for my sake. You did it for people to say, this one, that person is brave. This one, he's like so generous. The other one, he's a great scholar. And it's been said, so you get rewarded, you see. So he got the thawab that he was seeking to be famous. So that's the reward he was seeking. So if someone get paid, he could not be paid a second time. You were paid from the people by being praised. Therefore, you cannot be paid from Allah because he didn't do it for Allah. And that is the, the part of Qala. Biha salahu wal fasadu lil amal. Biha salahu wal fasadu lil amal. Hadith on Sahih. Yes. That's why you're not When it comes to routine, well, that's the important part. The niya has that light who will make the, this action itself light. Well, the niya which should bring the life in the heart. Well, that's why important the niya. Say, Bashar Mashaina bin Nuri Tami Yawm al Qiyam. بن بش بشر المشائين في الظلمات إلى المساجد بالنور التام يوم القيامة. So they are walking to the masjid 
And they are knowing that this darkness and everything is like a struggle to get to the masjid, to pray to Allah. That it will be transformed into light because they have the intention, with are going where? Going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that hudur al-qalb itself, what will give life to the action, which action will have that positive impact on the self. More focus, more khushua, more integrity, more racing for the good action, all of it because of that need. Well, the niyyah in the salat helps someone to have khushu'ah in the salat. Qala fabiha as-salahu wal-fasadu. Some of the, uh, insha'Allah, masail, uh, masail uh, related to the niyyah. And they think they are important to know them. Qal... المسألة الأولى المسألة الأولى قال النية محلها القلب النية reside in the heart قال اتفق العلماء على أن القلب محل النية وموضعها so the نية does not mean that you're going to say say oh Allah نويتو I'm intending to pray مغرب prayer now that's not is required to that. The niya, you are standing, you are there standing to pray to Allah, being conscious that this prayer is to Allah for this particular prayer of after the sunset maghrib. That's the niya, is in your heart. The only niya in the sunnah that the Prophet said it loud is sunnah al hajj. The only one that is permissible to say it loud. The Baik Allahum and the Prophet was teaching. And then the dhikr la Baik Allahum al Baik is part of the intention. Yeah. And given that background, in my chest thoughts I see probably a need for non Arabic speakers or uh, the people who don't know um, the difference of the time, let's say the work to be trained by saying those who, those, let's say, when you're Ajal, you know, you don't know who, you don't know Hassan, you don't know Maghrib. And I said, okay, I'm trained Maghrib intentionally now here. The train, I think that was connection to us. Well, then the training the rest of your life. If you train for one day too, because it's kind of, if we make it look, there's, there's difference, the requirement and the like it. And there's al-mustahsan, is accepted, said for example, so and so is doing the knee aloud, he's saying, oh Allah, you know, I said, it's hasan, it's good, as long as it does not bother people around him. It does not invalidate his salah or ruin his knee. But we're saying, is it an, uh, a condition? They say, no, it's not condition because the knee is in the heart. It's not in the tongue to say it. So in the Shafi'i uh, school, it's been narrated, qala hasana mustahsana, and they base on, on what I have said in the Hajj. I mean that someone should say it loud. فَهِيَ مُسْتَحْسَنَةً And it's not شرط. It's not a condition. وَلَكِنْ هِيَ أَصْلُهَا مَحَلُّهَا فِي الْقَلْبِ Some of the scholars say whoever who say it loud is bid'ah and everything. We say if you say it, it will not spoil your niya and will not invalidate your action loudly. But the meaning and the origin and the true niya is in the heart. Because we didn't hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he said, Oh Allahumma inni, he didn't say it. So here, for example, I have, 
قال احتج القائلون بالاستحباب التلفظ بها you know he said it's good to say it تلبية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم but that's for the حج not for the rest of the action وذلك ثابت عنه حيث يقول لبيك عمرة أو لبيك عمرة وحجة فيقاس على ذلك غير الحج من العبادات المختلفة so they make analogy deduction based on the حج on the rest of the عبادات and قال then they some or they said also they want to build and defend of this opinion he said if you engage more than one part uh, of your body so he said your heart and your tongue is better than just you know intended in your heart but all of that are not strong evidence to say that it is preferable to say it loud and to say it words you know allahumma inni nawaitu salat al-dhuhri wa la allahumma wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatara as-samawati wal ard hanifan nawaitu you know that's what they say salat al-dhuhri fi jama'atin i'm intending ya allah praying salat al-dhuhr in a congregation in its time and so on so that's that's already when someone you'll have it to say it as a condition it becomes like burdensome for the person because you're standing ready to say allahu akbar to enter in a live meeting so you're making the introduction of the niya more you already subhanallah someone he's ready to say allahu akbar to meet allah and talk to them no you have to say the niya i'm standing to who i'm standing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's here the saying of Ibn Taymiyyah, say this is, this is what they say to defend this opinion, but in the reality is مَرْدُودٌ وَمَرْجُوحٌ فيقول فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نوى العمر والحج وأحرم بذلك قبل التلبية So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he intended the Umrah al-Hajj before he said لَبَّيْك Because لَبَّيْك is dhikr, you know والأصل في النية أن تصحب العمل والنية originally need to be with the action when you're starting the action so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم intended before ويدل على ذلك ما صح عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أنه أنكر على رجل قال اللهم إني أريد حجا أو عمر قال ابن رجب في شرح الأربعين هذا خبر صحيح عنه ابن عمر said you should not say that you know because you already intended this in your heart there's, you know, many of Adilla that only is being narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said it loud in the Hajj. That's it. And the rest he didn't say it. So what will be the preferable? Is the one that the rest of the Ibadat, why? Because it's in the, in the Qalb, inshallah. Uh, we'll stop here, bi Allah ta'ala. So we will have, we'll continue next time some of the Masail concerning the Niyyah and to move, inshallah, to the next verse and as you see every verse require uh, kind of uh, good sharh uh, and to go through this qaida uh, to explain it so the, the, here the, the poem for every verse is a qaida that uh, you know uh, come under it different other uh, rules and the different other uh, Allah principles Okay, a few minutes and we start our class of Sharh al-Shubrawiyah.